SharePoint solution applications versus SharePoint apps model, which is right for you. Recently, we've heard some confusion from customers on what's the difference between a SharePoint solution application, like a site template, and the SharePoint apps in the App Store that are available in 2013. Just a quick introduction. I am Daryl Trimble. I'm from SharePoint Marketplace. We provide collaborative business applications built on top of SharePoint. These applications can run on SharePoint on-premise or in the cloud on SharePoint Online with Office 365. The SharePoint Business Suite includes an intranet portal, self-service, HR, IT support portal, CRM, and a project portal. You can purchase them individually or as a full suite, and they are full business solutions built on top of SharePoint. The objectives of this video are to educate you about SharePoint solutions versus SharePoint apps as defined in Microsoft's new app model. We're going to talk about what they are, what their role is in your SharePoint environment, how they should be used and deployed, and some of the impact of using them wrong. We're also going to use an example of a IT help desk application to show the differences between the two models of developing business applications for SharePoint. So let's talk about SharePoint solutions versus SharePoint apps in the app model. First of all, what are they? The SharePoint solution is typically a business application or a SharePoint site developed for a specific purpose. It might be, in the case we're going to show later, an IT help desk. It might be for purchasing or for HR to do, for instance, performance reviews or something like that. The SharePoint app model is typically a web part or a small app. So who builds it? Well, this is really important. The application solution is typically a business analyst or a SharePoint developer, and that means non-coding type SharePoint developer. The SharePoint app model is a web developer or programmer. In essence, it needs to have code done. What is it written in? Well, the SharePoint application is really not written in anything, but is developed on top of SharePoint with the SharePoint UI developing a SharePoint site. With the SharePoint app model, you have to know HTML, CSS, JavaScript, ASP, or jQuery languages to actually develop the application. So what tools are needed in each of these? Well, with SharePoint, it's really just the SharePoint UI browser, and optionally, if you're going to do some workflows or other things, the SharePoint Designer. If you're developing a SharePoint app with the app model, you're going to need Visual Studio, Azure, and web development tools. One very important note is SharePoint solutions, or application solutions, use the SharePoint native browser. So it's a common look and feel across all of those solutions. In the SharePoint app model, each user interface is custom built. So they may or may not look like other applications built using it. User capabilities. Well, this is really where a big difference is. Because SharePoint applications using the solution model are built on top of SharePoint, end users get to use all the SharePoint features. They get to create their own views and do notifications and do their My Site pages and so on. In the SharePoint app model, it's only whatever is built is available to the end user. So it's limited to whatever's designed and coded in the application. And then finally, another big difference is who can customize these? Well, because it's built on a SharePoint user interface, a business power user can do things like add fields and change views. As far as the SharePoint app model, only the developer can change it if the code is available, and oftentimes it's not. So let's take a little bit of history um, in looking at how business applications are developed. Traditionally, applications were coded by developers, what you see with SAP and PeopleSoft and even Word and Excel and so on. They were all coded by developers. They typically picked a platform. Uh, in modern times here, it was a database. They designed the application, and then they code the application. 
They package it and deliver it with source code being hidden underneath. Any customization changes requires you to go into that source code and change, typically, unless they've added in configuration capabilities, which is a lot of extra coding and many people don't do that. And integration, if you want to integrate other data into it, often is done through an application developer kit or ADK. The issues with this approach is, number one, it was very time consuming and costly to develop these applications. It wasn't very flexible because you couldn't change them. And business users did not like them because as their business changed, their applications could not change with them. Thus led to a new approach of the platform-based rapid application development platform, which SharePoint is. This is really where the business analyst or the business person understanding some of the technology can go in and create applications. The applications, rather than being coded, are built on a platform that supports adding data, forms, views, and workflows as components to build the application. Still, like the traditional approach, the application is designed. You build the application, though, on a platform using these components. This tends to be a much quicker way to build applications, and applications come out much more consistent looking for the end users to use. Like the ones above, you can package and install them. Now, the big difference is customization. These applications, because they were built on a platform, usually are very easy to customize because you can use platform features like in SharePoint features to do things like add columns and views and make changes. And integration often is built right into the platform very much like BCS in SharePoint is. So this approach of building using components fixed a lot of the issues that we saw in the earlier model. Faster development, common UI, configurable and changeable by business users. So if we take a look at kind of what how Microsoft has approached it, in 2010 with SharePoint 2010 they recommended the Sandbox Solutions model which very much supports using SharePoint as a platform and building solutions. However, with 2013 they introduced the App Store model. And in some cases, some people have said that's going to replace the sandbox or the solution model. This has confused a lot of people. And so what we want to do is hopefully look into this a little further and figure out where each model fits in your business applications deployment. To do this, we're going to examine two applications. The first one is built using the traditional SharePoint solution building of a site with lists and workflows and views and that type of thing for an IT help desk. The second is a demonstration of a SharePoint app model created application, a help desk, using the SharePoint app model that Microsoft recommends. For the example, we've also put in links to YouTube demos in detail of both of these applications. The first application is built on SharePoint 2013. We happen to be on SharePoint Online in 365. And we can see that uh, this is an end user IT support portal. And actually, I'm signed in as an administrator. And uh, this is what the end users would see and use. If they go to, for instance, their home intranet, they'd also see the same user interface and feel. That's because everything was built on the same platform. The solution integrates with all parts of the Microsoft platform, including Link. So for instance, if I wanted to contact Daryl, I could do that here. I could also sort and filter and look at different views of my data any way that I wanted. It cross-references tickets with documents and uh, also with assets and knowledge base, and I can go in and add my own lists and document libraries if I choose. Here we see the user interface for the help desk that was built using the app model. Now it's a very nice user interface and uh, the 
they've got their own menus up there, they've got tickets and that type of thing. However, the user interface is specific to this application. They do point out that it does bring in um, information from SharePoint, and this is actually kept in a SharePoint list. They also can go in and do settings and a number of things as well. So again, very nicely laid out application. However, if we take a look at this, we can see, number one, that there is specific forms. But if you want to add additional fields, you cannot do that easily with this. They have to put in different views up here because you can't just build your own views. You can't sort, you can't filter. Um, it is whatever it's being built into the application. So there is some limitations, though it does look very nice. So we invite you to go take a look at both of these applications and look at them with the view of how do I change it? How do my users go in and look at the data as they want to look at it, even if it doesn't fit exactly what the application has built into it? And then think about how it fits in with the rest of your applications. And then finally, what if your requirements change? Can you go in and add fields? Can you add views? Can you change different dashboards and so on? That's the key difference between platform-based applications and the app model-based applications. So let's take a look at the comparison. First of all, who built this? The first one was a SharePoint application analyst in SharePoint using the UI. The second was a web developer. The help desk on the SharePoint solution side took two to three days. This one took several weeks. We actually tried to replicate this uh, using our staff. Both are easy to can install and configure. Only the SharePoint solution has a standard UI that is just like any other apps that are built in SharePoint. The UI is built in the SharePoint app model. There's no cross-reference to doc, email, or other things. That was easily added in SharePoint. However, it's not in the app model. You would have to, again, program to actually make that happen. Any changes can be done through the application administrator, anybody that's a SharePoint power user. Can't do that on the app model side. You can't change reporting and views. You can't add fields or change forms. You can't do custom workflows through that model. Upgrades are easily done if you're doing a sandbox solution, especially on the SharePoint side, but on the SharePoint app model side, that's unclear. And you can add web parts at any time to enhance your SharePoint solution. Again, this is not the case with the SharePoint app model. So we're not saying that the SharePoint app model is a bad model. We're saying to use it in the right place at the right time and use the SharePoint UI solution model in the right place at the right time. Our suggestion is you can have the best of all worlds. You can do component assembled solutions where the business applications are actually built on SharePoint sites, and these applications can cover one or more business processes. Some of these business processes may actually be application components built in the SharePoint app model. These are assembled by business analysts who deeply understand the business processes and the requirements. We are saying take web parts and application components and build those in the SharePoint app model. That way you can use them over and over again. They don't necessarily change, so you can use them as a component, but they become a component of the business application to make them better. The combination of these two will give you the solution that you need for your organization. Which is exactly what we do at SP Marketplace. If you're interested in seeing applications that are collaborative business applications built as a SharePoint solution, come to spmarketplace.com. There you will see examples of business applications built using the combination of both the web op, the SharePoint app model and the SharePoint browser UI model.